we thank you for joining us here today. Today is, I'll call it a progress report on Chevrolet Volt and the E-Flex. So there may not be a lot of detail and new nuggets and bits and pieces of information, but it's very important to us, to Denise Gray, my colleague and I, who is our lead on the battery, to make ourselves accessible to you, to help further the understanding of our development, and to serve a transparent role, to give you a glimpse of what product development is like on the fly, as it happens. So we appreciate you um, participating with us, understanding the risk that we're taking, understanding the sensitivity of some of the information. So allow me briefly to go through a few backup charts. I promise I'll go through them quickly so we can make our way to getting into some Q&A and other discussion that is very relevant to all of you. As, uh, as Scott suggested, it was literally a year ago, right around this time frame at the LA Auto Show, that our chairman, our chief executive officer, Rick Wagner, shared a, a quite compelling and enticing vision for the company. We were going to go on the road to create energy diversity, displace petroleum, and uh, that was going to be paced by General Motors taking a leadership position in the development of electrically driven vehicles. We never realized what a storm that would cause. In Detroit, we showed the first manifestation of this concept and this idea, the Chevy Bolt, which you see before you. Now, where did this all begin? Certainly the Chevy Bolt has captivated many of us, so I still am excited and enthused to work directly with my engineers, see the progress they're making in our many, many challenges. I teased some folks earlier today that Denise and I are literally flying on the Red Eye flight tonight, and many of us will be tomorrow morning Detroit time at the battery lab to see the progress that the, the team members made. But really, when the company set forth on this on this journey, if you will, to develop electric-driven vehicles, we looked at the world of the future. The chart you see behind us takes a look at the growth in population, particularly in the emerging countries and economies. And then it takes a look at the degree to which the percentage of people have access to cars. In the world today, we're talking about 12% of the people have cars. I think many of you know, in the United States, that number is almost a one-to-one -one relationship. What does that tell us? As other economies like China and India increase, we will increase the car park by 2020, probably by 300 billion vehicles. Do we really want all those vehicles to be petroleum-based, assuming petroleum is their primary energy source? Can the world sustain that? I don't think so. This was truly a rallying cry for the company. Now, take a look at that population growth, the increase in the percentage of vehicle ownership, and how that manifests into the energy equation. You can see that over time, energy requirements, consumption, demand increases dramatically. I'll spare you the specifics of the detail charts. We engineers love going through the details. But a couple of key points is, right now, a thousand barrels a second consumption. In the future, by 2030, we'll see 85 million barrels per day go to 120 billion barrels per day. Certainly not sustainable. Half of that consumption is used in our transportation business, so we feel an obligation to change that equation. And one of the most critical and important points that we realized as a company for the 100 years of the existence of the automobile industry, we've been 98 to 99 percent dependent on petroleum. Not an optimal business strategy. We can take action to change that. And there came the Chevy Bolt. The interesting insight that we gleaned as we looked through the various pathways to energy, we have hydrogen, we have electricity, we have liquid fuels as the primary drivers. We've seen initiatives that we've taken on relative to ED5 to change the composition of the liquid fuels. We've seen initiatives we've taken on to develop hydrogen, which is almost interchangeable with electricity. The key point is that electricity was enthralling to us since it had the most diverse set of pathways to be created, many of them in renewable form, many of them in flexible forms, infrastructure that existed around the world and the beauty of it all was the capability was not fully utilized during off-peak times. When an electric vehicle would likely be charged, 
fascinating concept. So the concept builds. Many of you have seen this chart. Well, let me highlight a few aspects of it. It hasn't changed much, but a little bit over time. General Motors works in each one of the various areas of the bubble. We work on conventional internal combustion engines and efficiency improvements there. We're obviously major players now in the hydroelectric field. And you saw the many announcements from Chevrolet today, a couple of varying hybrid vehicles. Last year at the LA, which we're working on for production as well. Beyond that, we have been now leaders in pursuing the extended range electric vehicle, which we call the Chevy Volt. That's part of our eFlex system and technologies. And part of that is also included with the hydrogen fuel cell, which is part of the eFlex family. Here are some of the examples in the first two bubbles. We saw the Impala 85 with the display. We see the mild Malibu hybrid as well as the Tahoe Tubo. The new, the new story comes into play and was introduced in Detroit as we introduced the world to eFlex. And the eFlex is our sub brand for the technology and the program that we are delivering that will deliver the Chevy Volt and it's we're collaborating relative to working these two programs together, sharing parts, and then we'll be timed as appropriate when the technology is ready. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the basics of electric e-driven vehicles. And we'll not bore you too much with electric e-driven vehicles 101, but I think it's, it's important to fundamentally touch base on some of the key points. Purely electrically driven. The first 40 miles of the E-Flex vehicle, in this case the Chevy Bolt, is electrically driven. The electrically driven component is a full range capability. It never requires the engine to sub provide supplemental power, work through transients, anything of that sort. The engine only comes on when the battery has been depleted. So we're talking about 100% powered by electricity. The engine is not connected to the wheels at all. It is a stationary channel. <coughs> And it allows for electricity as the common denominator to bring to bear this very new, diverse energy resource that has infrastructure all over the world. In might I say, very low cost infrastructure when you, when you evaluate it on a dollars per mile basis. And we believe ultimately electrical vehicles, electrical driven vehicles, will be simpler, a lot less moving parts, which will advantage us in the future. Now, the reason we're able to deliver eFlex really is, is, is much involved with where our history has been. And many of you are familiar with our history, perhaps even been a little critical of our history, but much of the activities in the past has been focused on R&D. As we move towards production-oriented environments, we build on the background of this history. We couldn't do an extended range electric vehicle without the benefit of the development that has occurred with the Project Driver Equinoxes. We couldn't do it without the development activity and the smart minds of some of the EV1 engineers that are working with us on our eFlex program today. As we indicated, we're working collaboratively on sharing parts with a fuel cell derivative, and we'll talk more about that in the future as, as that further develops, with the goal being the first production installment, the lead application is our E-Flex Chevy Volt, which is our extended range electric vehicle. 